spare a thought for Ghost Recon Wildlands. Ubisoft's latest open world shooter launched the kind of icy reception not even a thousand John Burnfall pet dogs could hope to warm up. It's not all bad news though. Just as Breakpoint recycles the looting system from The Division and the dialogue system from Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so too does it use the same Anvil X 2.0 engine as, well, pretty much the entire Assassin's Creed and Ghost Recon series since 2014, including Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's therefore a pleasant surprise to see that Breakpoint actually runs a little better on PC than Wildlands, although make no mistake, this is still a pretty tough game to run quickly on most hardware setups. Breaking 60fps at 1080p, for example, is doable with mid-range GPUs on the very high and ultra presets, but even the fastest and most expensive cars will struggle to hit 144fps if that's what you're after. 1440p and 4K likewise need the high-end stuff, and cars like the RTX 2080 Ti are especially prone to CPU bottlenecking at lower resolutions and settings. Breakpoint also suffers from big dips from average to minimum FPS, and the built-in benchmarking tool we've used includes some relatively quiet scenes. In other words, pay close attention to the 97th percentile results of our hardware testing as well as the average results, as these will give a better idea of how the game runs in its most frantic moments. Thanks to MSI for providing our testing hardware. We've broken in Breakpoint on 28 dedicated graphics cards, as well as a few integrated graphics processors, 8 CPUs and 3 laptops. One last note before we get into the results in full is that we use a temporal injection anti-aliasing setting for all these tests, which can produce some slight blurriness at lower resolutions, but it's generally worth the 10 to 15% performance improvement it offers over the regular AA. With that out of the way, let's start simple with the low preset, not at 1080p, but at 720p with integrated graphics. Intel's graphics drop faster than Breakpoint's Metacritic score, not even successfully running the benchmark, but Vega 11 managed to stay largely above 30 FPS and averages closer to 50. That's a decent start, but 1080p low might surprise you with how much dedicated GPUs can struggle. The GTX 1050 needed multiple runs just to reach a reliable level of performance, but even that was pretty low, so we'd recommend sticking to GPUs with at least 4GB of memory. Cards like the GTX 1650 and RX 570 can do 60fps, but considering how basic the game looks on a low preset, it's not unreasonable to wonder why even these cheap GPUs aren't doing better. At 1080p medium, the GTX 1650 can drop a little below 60fps, while the RX 570 goes even lower. Higher up the table, the RX 590 just managed to squeak past that 60fps minimum mark, but it's part of a surprisingly poor showing for AMD cards overall. The 3GB GTX 1060 is faster, and the GTX 1660 Ti hugely outpaces it. The latter is also very close behind the Radeon RX 5700, though again that's more of a poor showing on the Radeon's part than anything else. Speaking of AMD, all three of their top GPUs congregate around the 120fps mark on medium, as well as the 130fps mark on low. This is just some rather heavy CPU-imposed limitation is afoot, and NVIDIA cards aren't exempt from it either. Every single model from the RTX 2060 upwards has a touch more variation in average results than with AMD, but they all produce suspiciously similar 97th percentile results. Moving on, except not really, the most striking thing about 1080p high is how similar everything is to 1080p medium. All that bottlenecking is still in effect, and all the same GPUs would form at very nearly the same level. That, unfortunately, means more disappointment for RX 5700 owners, although the RX 570 is still hanging in there. The jump to very high makes for some altogether starker changes. The GTX 1660 Ti now runs between 70 and 95 FPS, down from 80 to 108 on high, while the RX 590's minimum finally drops below 60 FPS. You could say it's a good thing that so many GPUs are still hitting 60 FPS, or near enough to it, but it's not all sunshine and smoke grenades for those with higher end systems. Even the RTX 2080 Ti falls short of 144 FPS, not a single GPU is able to stay above a 100 FPS minimum. One thing to note is that the RX 5700 XT finally managed to sneak above an Nvidia card, the RTX 2060, but it's only by a couple of frames on average, and the RTX 2060's minimum of performance is actually very, very slightly higher. Yet again, that's a point for Nvidia. Last up for 1080p is the Ultra preset. There's not so much CPU limiting going on here, not how a gap has opened up between the RTX 2060 Super and the RTX 2080 Super, but it's still grim reading if you're hoping to play with the best settings at 100fps or higher. Averaging above 60fps, let alone avoiding drops below it, now requires at least a GTX 1660. And to stay smooth throughout though, an RTX 2060 or RX 5700 would be better. This is also true of 1440p, at least assuming you're sticking with ultra quality like we did. To Breakpoint's credit, this resolution jump doesn't demand truly vast amounts of GPU heft, and you can get by with a GTX 1660 Ti, but a solid 60fps is only really possible on a premium card like the RTX 2080 Super or the RTX 2080 Ti. It's also worth singling out the Radeon 7 here, as its 1440p results, which are almost identical to those of the RX 5700, are the latest in a string of poor performances. The Radeon 7 does a bit better at 4K, but it still can't beat the newer RX 5700 XT, which itself runs respectably, if not amazingly. 
An unfaltering 60 FPS is out of the question, even as the RTX 2080 Ti comes close with its 52 FPS minimum. But one of Breakpoint's bright points is that so many cars can handle at least 30 FPS at such a punishing resolution. Considering how underwhelmingly it runs at 1080p low, we did not see that coming. When it comes to CPUs, we already know that even a powerful processor can hit a wall. We test GPUs with an overclocked Core i7-8700K, and it was still bottlenecking. The Anvil Next engine has something of a historical precedent with CPU unfriendliness, so all in all Breakpoint is shaping up to be a bad time for those with underpowered CPUs. As it happens though, only the absolute slowest of our bunch, the Core i3-8100, really suffers. The Core i5-8400 starts off badly on 1080p low, posting a higher average FPS but a significantly lower minimum FPS than the Ryzen 5 2600, before redeeming itself on medium and high. Also at 1080p low, overclocking proves key for the Core i7-8700K. Overclocked, it beats both the Ryzen 9 3900X and the Ryzen 7 3700X, but at stock speeds it's slower than both. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the Core i9 9900K is the fastest throughout, but the gap closes significantly as settings start to go higher and the GPU becomes a defining factor. 1080p high is a final point, some might say the breaking point, before its advantages become measurable, at least compared to the overclocked Core i7 8700K. That's not to discount the Ryzen family though. The 3700X puts up an especially strong performance, barely dropping below the 3900X at all settings and resolutions. The Ryzen 5 3600 isn't quite so spirited, suggesting 8 cores can make the difference over 6, but don't forget about clock speeds either. The Ryzen 5 2600 has the same core and thread count as the 3600, but its lower base and boost clock speeds are typically several hundred megahertz lower. That explains why it falls behind in our benchmarks, though at 1440p and above it ends up tied. Finally, we turn to laptop performance. The GE75 and its RTX 2080 can sometimes roar ahead of the GS75 and GL63, but with Breakpoint that's not really the case on lower settings. It's only on very high and ultra that it really pulls away, while well, the opposite seems to happen with the other two. They've become closer and closer to the point where the GL63 and its RTX 2060 is actually pushing slightly higher on average. Remember though, it's the minimums we're watching, and the RTX 2070 equipped GS75 maintains a considerable advantage of staying above 60 FPS at every preset except Ultra. The GS75 most likely has its superior CPU to thank for that, as the max Q version of the RTX 2070 isn't that much better than an RTX 2060. With the focus on 97th percentile results in mind, take another look at the GS75 too. Its average results get much higher, but it seems to struggle with minimum FPS. It still manages to keep above 60 FPS, even on Ultra, but it does take the shine off its average FPS performances. Ultimately, we'd say Ghost Recon Breakpoint has bigger problems than anything to do with its performance. And it's true that you don't need massively powerful hardware to get it up and running. To get it running at its best, though? That's a different matter, and the very high and Ultra presets evidently do need both a strong GPU and a good CPU to enable it. Judging by how common it is to get huge performance dips, the art of getting Breakpoint to perform well is as much about specifically compensating for these drops as it is trying to maintain a solid average frame rate. Unless there's some serious optimization on that plan for the future, something you can hope for but probably not bank on, we suggest either lowering settings or giving this game a miss entirely. Breakpoint in its current state needs help, especially the game which has been poorly received by both critics and players. Thanks again to our hardware partner MSI, and be sure to like and subscribe for more performance analysis videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.